Welcome back to the program, everybody. I am excited for today's episode because we're going to talk about ribelsis. Now, if you do remember in my Ozempic video, I was going to give you the breakdown on this, and certainly I'm going to give you my opinion. But in case you forgot, my name is Dr. Dan, and I'm a pharmacist turned weight management specialist, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss another episode. So I want to start this off by asking you a couple of questions. Do you have any siblings? And if you do, were you the favorite child or was your sibling the favorite child? It's likely that the children that were the favorites are probably saying, you know what, our mother and our parents, they loved us equally. However, the non-favorite child, we know this is not the case. My mother always said that she loved my brother and I equally, but actions really speak louder than words. My brother always got more attention, he always seemed to get the best Christmas presents, and I always got kind of the excuse that, well, Danny, you're hard to shop for. And it's really not my fault that I didn't know what I wanted until I saw what my brother got, and I would have been happy to take what he had because he's having so much fun with it, and then I get super jealous. So, you know, it's not really a me problem, it's just more my mother didn't try hard enough because I wasn't the favorite. Of course, I'm kidding, kind of. I'm being a bit dramatic, but you kind of get the point that I'm going here for. My mother just loved me just a little bit less. That's all. No big deal. Anyways, this seemed like an appropriate introduction to a new diabetes medication to the market called Ribelsis. So, have you heard of it? Probably not. I'm sure you've heard of oral Ozempic, though. And that is because that is what Ribelsis is. And that's what everyone refers to it as in a typical least favorite sibling kind of way. So Ribelsis does contain the parent molecule semaglutide, just like Ozempic. However, Ribelsis is an oral formulation, whereas Ozempic is an injectable formulation. It also needs to be taken once a day as the tablet formulation versus once a week in the case of Ozempic. Now, Ribelsis is a new diabetes medication, and it does an okay job at getting that job done. And I'm really sorry to my drug rep friends, but, you know, let me explain. And P.S., you know, when you start paying me some of that big pharma money, I, I might change my tune around some of these things. I mean, probably not, but we'll never know until you actually do pay me. And as you can see here in this picture, semaglutide is a massive molecule. So one of the first things that the drug company had to overcome was how do we get this drug to cross over the whole nasty GI tract side of things? You see, when we do an injectable, you just stick it in, the needle does all the hard work, the drug goes in, and we get our effects. But when we have to cross the GI tract, we all of a sudden have like a war zone in Fort Knox that we need to get through in order to get the drug into the system. And on top of that, we've got to get enough of that drug through to even have some kind of physiological effect on the body. So what the drug companies did is they attached this special absorption molecule thing to semaglutide called SNAC. Now, SNAC is an acronym for something, something, and something, something, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because it's very chemistry-like, and chemistry was, but was not my best subjects. Now, the SNAC molecule, or absorption enhancer, has been around for a while, in particular in formulations with vitamin B12. And I'm sure many of you have probably taken a vitamin B12 supplement at some point in time, maybe to increase your energy levels, or to help with anemia, that sort of thing. And if you have, you've likely come into contact with this SNAC absorption enhancer that has allowed for a greater uptake of vitamin B12. So the way that SNAC works is it creates a temporary change in the acidity or the pH of your GI tract in a very small, small location in order to allow an opening or a pathway to open up to take semaglutide from the GI tract and into the bloodstream. They call it like transcellular location or relocation or something like that. I just call it magic and wishes. It's a pretty neat technology. However, my knowledge and just how it works is pretty limited, but here's a nice little picture to kind of give you the idea of it and you can take a closer look at it there. Now, one of the big concerns that we have is that, hey, if we're creating this big old hole or pathway for a massive molecule like semaglutide to get from the GI tract into the bloodstream, are we gonna let other things like, you know, pathogens, food, or maybe drugs that might be with it and those get extra absorbed and cause all kinds of issues? And while that is certainly a fair point, that does not seem to be the case. It looks like that the snack absorption enhancer and semaglutide are kind of so tightly knit together and they're happening in such close proximity in terms of creating this hole that we're not worried about pathogens and other drugs crossing over into the bloodstream as well. Now, in saying that, the drug company does recommend that you take ribelsis on a completely empty stomach, so no food, no medication, and no more than four ounces or about 120 mils of water at least 30 to 60 minutes before you have anything else. 
Talk about a royal pain in the ass. And this is probably one of the reasons why I was also not the favorite child. So that's one strike against Ribelsis. We already know what semaglutide does. I talked a lot about it in terms of my Ozempic videos and how it manages blood sugar and helps with weight. But how does Ribelsis, this oral formulation, what does it do? How does it actually do in terms of lowering our blood sugars? So there was a fun little trial called the Pioneer 6 trial, which was by Hussein and friends. And what they did is they were looking at the cardiovascular safety of Ribelsis in terms of diabetes management. So we wanted to make sure, and this has to happen with every single diabetes drug that comes to market, is that a drug doesn't cause nasty things like heart attacks and strokes. Now, the good news is Ribelsis didn't cause any issues. It was no better or no worse than the placebo that it was compared to, so that's great news. However, it also didn't provide any extra benefits, so it didn't seem to have any protective effects. It was just neutral across the board in that it didn't cause any cardiovascular events, but also didn't prevent them either compared to placebo. Compared to the golden child Ozempic, who was shown to reduce your risk of cardiovascular events when you take that medication. And that's another point in the disappointment column for ribelsis, unfortunately. Now, in terms of lower sugars, ribelsis was shown to reduce blood sugars or A1C, which is your three month blood sugar average by about 1%. Now, this was pretty comparable to Victoza, which was one of the first GLP-1 receptor agonists that came to market, and it's a once a day injection. So it was comparable in that respect of things. However, compared to Ozempic, the injectable form again of ribelsis, what it was found is that Ozempic, you know, allows for about a 1.5% reduction in A1C. So still was not quite as effective in that regard. Similarly, in the weight loss category of things, ribelsis did okay. It led to an average weight loss of about four to five kilograms at the top dose of 14 milligrams per day. However, again, compared to Ozempic, it really didn't stack up. Ozempic at a dose of one milligram once a week leads to about five to six kilograms of weight loss, depending on the study that you look at. And in, when we increase the dose of Ozempic up to 2.4 milligrams once a week, what we actually see is upwards of 15 kilos being lost. At one of the main studies that they looked at, that's nearly 20% of an individual's body fat or body weight being lost from baseline. So pretty crazy and definitely ribelsis is just not being comparable. Would we get more if we increase the dose of ribelsis? Maybe. Now, what about the side effects? We know Ozempic is certainly more potent and that ultimately means we get more side effects, but how does ribelsis compare? Well, ribelsis ultimately leads to the pretty standard GI side effect profile of the GLP-1 receptor agonist. So things like uh, nausea, upset stomach, GERD or heartburn, rare, rare cases if you eat too quickly and too much, it might cause vomiting and possibly some constipation and diarrhea. And the good news is, is that the risk of having a low blood sugar while just on ribelsis is really, really quite low. And actually it's nil altogether because the mechanism that the GLP-1 receptor agonists act on to lower our blood sugars really shuts off when your blood sugars are in the normal range. People that had a hypoglycemic episode with ribelsis were generally taking something like insulin or a sulfonylurea, and those two drugs are known to lower your blood sugars and certainly can increase your risk of having a hypoglycemia event or a blood sugar that's less than four. So if ribelsis was not so great, why the hell did they even make it to begin with? Well, the drug company asserts that it's what the people wanted. The people don't want to do an injection. The people want a tablet. Now, there's certainly a few individuals who absolutely are needle phobic, and yeah, an oral formulation would certainly be preferred over an injectable. However, I would say a great majority of people are actually pretty okay with injecting Ozempic. There usually isn't too many concerns or issues, especially when they see that the needle is really no bigger than the whiskers on my face. Maybe not right now, I shaved this morning, but when my beard grows out a little bit, it really is no bigger than the whiskers on my face. As well, when it comes to Ozempic, you only need to do it once a week. You don't have to take a tablet every single day. Now, personally, this is very much just my own opinion. I think it's more of an issue with healthcare professionals and them not being comfortable with the injectable formulations. They find it much, much easier to counsel on how to take a tablet versus how to walk a patient through on how to do an injection. Anytime we've got a puncture or, or poke the body or something like that, there might be increased risks. And in reality, yes, I can see where they're coming from. But at the same time, it's really, really straightforward. The needle isn't that big. And once you learn it, it's, it's super easy. Now, am I biased because I do this literally every single day? Yeah, probably. But regardless, I think it's still a moot point. And really, I don't know if we really needed an oral formulation 
considering that most medications that are going to be coming to the market in the future are going to be some kind of injectable format because as science advances and the molecules get bigger and bigger and more specific at what we want them to do, it's going to be harder and harder to create these oral formulations to get a drug from the GI tract into the bloodstream. Even with ribelsis, you take this 14 milligram tablet and you're only getting 1% of the semaglutide in that tablet from your GI tract inside of your bloodstream. So it's almost a moot point. Whereas Ozempic, you do the injection, well, 100% of that drug is now in your system and has bypassed the whole GI tract system thing and can have its full effects and benefits. Now, this is just my opinion, of course, but it's something to think about. And in reality, I would much prefer to give my patient a drug that is going to have all these extra benefits, not only in protecting your heart, lowering your blood sugars, and possibly on the weight management side of things, if that is something that we're looking at, compared to a drug that's kind of like, yeah, kind of half-assing it, really in the, the least favorite child sense, if you will. So in conclusion, I'm not super impressed with Ribelsis. Again, sorry to my drug rep pals, but Ribelsis really isn't offering anything beyond blood sugar control, maybe some weight loss benefits, but outside of that, it's not helping to protect your heart. And in reality, this whole dosing regimen around it is going to be a royal pain in the ass. And in reality, are you going to have to wait the 30 to 60 minutes and be on an empty stomach completely and that sort of thing? Probably not, you're probably still gonna get some of the drug absorbed, but we just don't have the complete picture of the data. And currently what the drug monograph says is that, yeah, you should stick to that dosing pattern to make sure that we don't get treatment failure. And to be quite honest, I don't see this drug moving beyond the diabetes realm of things. I don't think we're gonna get enough benefit out of it to get you know, to the weight loss aspect of things. I think it'll just stay in the diabetes world, won't get pushed in the obesity realm of things when we've got better agents like Ozempic and even better agents than Ozempic potentially in the pipeline. So unlike myself, I can certainly see why Ribelsis is not the favorite child. It is the oral form of Ozempic after all. But if you are extremely needle phobic or you just didn't tolerate Ozempic or any other injectable GLP-1 receptor agonist at all, this might be an option for you. But get some teaching around Ozempic and the injectable from your healthcare provider, your physician or pharmacist, and really work together to work through on how it all works and stuff like that. And if you're okay with doing the injection, I generally recommend going with Ozempic, the golden child that has all the extra benefits. So that's it for today, you beautiful people. That is Ribelsis. That is the data. That is the information on it. If you have some questions, drop it in the comments below. And of course, as always, Click the subscribe button down below so you don't miss another episode and check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. We're on just about every single platform out there and would love to connect. So if you've got your questions, you've got your concerns, shoot them down below and I will answer them.